Sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory? When I'm home where my soul belongs, was I love when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song? I want to live like that.
Welcome to worship. <coughs> if you haven't had a chance to sign up for the flu shot clinic, that is on September 8th. There's a sign up sheet in the narthex. Take a look at that for an open time. Two weeks from today is God's Work, Our Hands Day, and there will be more information next week. Um, we have started doing refugee assistance. There's a table in the narthex. So 
you are invited to bring items for the Afghan refugees. There are flyers on that table, modest, simple clothing for all genders and ages, coloring books and crayons, toiletry items, disposable razors, laundry detergent, diapers, wipes, hairbrushes, and combs. And if you have any questions, you can see Nancy Prickett. She'll be taking all of the items to the Red Cross at the Joint Base. So please stand for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Beloved, beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Here in this place, a new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you are, we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the second chapter of Song of Songs. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our walls, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Holy wisdom, holy word. Let us say Psalm 45 responsively. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skillful writer. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia and the music of strings from ivory palaces make you glad. The second reading is from the first chapter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not, mere, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, 
to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself sustained, unsustained by the word. Holy wisdom, holy way. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe. The washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Soon autumn will be upon us, and life will speed up. Classes are beginning. Students will be going back to school, and the fall programs of churches will be in full swing, albeit tempered by the ongoing pandemic. I wonder if you have started or renewed a spiritual discipline these last several months, one that will carry you into the fuller schedule of autumn. If not, there is still time. It is always the right time to pray, to ask God to guide and strengthen us, and to remind us of the blessings and peace of summer. Now is also a good time to open our Bibles just left of center and read the Song of Songs. We heard just a snippet. It's a forgotten book, though I did preach on it about a year ago. Hidden away between pragmatic Ecclesiastes, there is a time, and monumental Isaiah. But if you look, you'll find it shining with summer's golden light. In its current state of neglect, it is difficult to remember that the Song of Songs was once viewed as a key capable of unlocking the whole of Scripture. Readers found in its pages a garden in which one might meet God walking in the cool of the day, a pool of meaning in which one might swim and swim and never sound the bottom, a window through which one might see the glory of God. 
this book of love poetry in which no body part is left uncelebrated, no fragrance or taste undescribed, was once a devotional text par excellence. This book, which nowhere mentions God, once functioned as a cherished path to profound intimacy with God. For Christians these days, the song functions as a quarry for wedding readings and not much else. Why have we forgotten it? Is it without the structure of allegory to give shape to our readings that we are made so uncomfortable by its frank eroticism that we'd rather ignore it? There's a long history of anxiety about the song. In the third century, origin of Alexandria, one of the song's greatest interpreters warned that the song was such powerful stuff that it should not be read at all until one had conquered one's passions. But fear did not drive Origen's readings. Love did. Even as he worried about its unpredictable erotic power, he recommended that we pray the Song of Songs and make its words our own. Join with the bride in saying what she says, he advises, so that you may also hear what she heard. If we are to recover the Song of Songs as a text of devotion in our day, it will be by taking Origen's words to heart. If we are to find in the song a path to intimacy with God, it will be by joining the lovers in saying what they say so that we may also hear what they heard. Try this. Read Song of Songs 1, 15 to 16. Read that small part and make it your prayer for a day or two. See how the world looks to these, with these words in your heart. In these verses, we hear the voices of two lovers so enraptured with each other that all they can do is breathe in and breathe out the word beautiful. The man says to the woman, Ah, you are beautiful, my love. Ah, you are beautiful. And the woman replies, Ah, you are beautiful, my beloved. Truly lovely. The whole orientation of the Song of Songs is captured in these few words. It's posture toward the world. Ah, you are beautiful, my love. Ah, you are beautiful. What will we hear if we spend time noticing and praising the beauty all around us, breathing it in and breathing it out? What will we hear if we make the words of the song our own? This is a prayer we can pray anywhere, at school, at work, at home, turning over in our sleep. When we are stuck in traffic, when we are jostling through a crowd of people we do not know, or when we are sharing a meal with people we do. Ah, you are beautiful, my love. Ah, you are beautiful. Breathing this prayer may illuminate beauty in unexpected places, in crowded places, in the broken places of our lives, in busy moments. Lift up your head and look around you as the lovers do. Ah, you are beautiful. The lovers in the Song of Songs find beauty everywhere they look, in each other's bodies, in the fields where they pasture their sheep, in the rooms and orchard where they make love, in the turning of the seasons, in the animals and trees and hills all around them. Like King Solomon, 
who First Kings says gave the same poetic attention to the hyssop that grows in the walls that he gave to the cedars of Lebanon. They know that no beautiful thing is too small to be adored. They let no beauty go unnoticed, uncelebrated, unpraised. Every time they exhale their reverence and adoration, ah, you are beautiful. They bind themselves more deeply to the life of the world that God created and called good. As the autumn busyness intensifies, try following in the footsteps of these lovers, imitating their way of receiving the world with love and awe and praise. Let us enter into their dialogue and begin a conversation of our own with God, with others, and with the world all around. Ah, you are beautiful. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of creation, that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Be with the firefighters in California. Help them as they try to contain those raging raging infernos 
a sure sign that we need to be more inspired to protect threatened habitats and ensure a, sustain a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority, especially our president and vice president. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are, who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Be with those who are ill, especially Dave, Jim, Joan, Natalie, Marie, Colin, Dominic, Tom, Marilyn, Fran, Mighty, Rebecca, Gretchen, and Mitch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Afghanistan and the foreign nationals waiting to be evacuated to safety and freedom. We pray for the military and their families as they end their mission in Afghanistan. Be with the families of those who lost their lives. We as a nation mourn the loss of these brave men and women who gave their lives in service to their country. We seldom think about the risks they constantly face, but are thankful they are willing to serve. We pray for the people of Tennessee and New England dealing with flooding rains, and those in the Western United States continuing to fight massive wildfires. Strengthen them for the long months of recovery. Be with those who will be affected by Hurricane Ida. Today is the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, so we pray we've learned some things, but the strength Ida re of Ida reminds us that nature is incredibly powerful. Keep the loss of life to a minimal, minimum. Strengthen them for long months of recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed, especially Linda and Eleonora, who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be, we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who know the chosen now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who know the chosen love. Come, now is the time to worship. Come. His blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory, when I'm home where my soul belongs? Was I loved when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song? I want to live like that and give it all I have so that everything I say and do points to you. If love is who I am, then this is where I'll stand. Recklessly. God bless you all, and see you next week. Live like that this week.